everybody, this is Dr. A here. In this video, we are going to be exploring a uh, second example of applying load combinations using LRFD. So um, just like always, you want to write everything down, um, usually watching and listening uh, to this kind of material that's calculation based is not good enough. You want to uh, take your pencil to your paper and write it down along with us. <clears throat> so Let's look at our given information here. Um, under given, we're asked to determine the maximum factored moment in the beam using LRFD. Um, so we're going to need to explore the LRFD load combinations here in a second. So here we have a simply supported beam. Um, we have a, a pin on the left side, which we can just label as A. And we have a roller on the right side, which we can label as B. And we see that we have a, a dead load, which is a, a point load of two kips three feet away from A. And then we have another point load that's a live load. Notice the subscript L for live load. That is uh, equal to seven kips, which is three feet away from point B. Okay, so um, the first thing we want to do under solution is we want to see if we can list out our applicable LRFD load combination. So in order to do this, I'm going to refer to ASCE 716. And, um, you know, you could maybe re refer to another source to find these LRFD load combinations. They're pretty much all summarized in several different codes um, and standards. ASC 716 is what I'm specifically looking at, but um, the same ones can be found in the International Building Code, um, you know, uh, textbooks, so on and so forth. So uh, again, I'm just referring to ASC 716. <clears throat> so load combination one that um, may be applicable is gonna be 1.4 times a dead load effect. And load combination two may be applicable. That's going to be equal to 1.2 times a dead load effect plus 1.6 times a live load effect. Now, um, of the basic load combinations, these are really the only two that um, could be applicable to us. If you look at your basic load combinations for strength design or for LRFD, um, none of the others would govern whenever you just have a, a dead load and a live load. So we're going to explore both of these as we move forward. So um, we're going to uh, look at each one of these effects, um, the, the load effects on this beam separately. So we're going to do a dead load analysis first, and then we're going to do a live load analysis after that. So let's start with our dead load analysis, okay? So we're going to say dead load analysis. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this beam um, only subjected to the dead load. And so kind of drawing this out, we have three feet and nine feet here. And um, I'm going to use this, this little sketch right here also as my free body diagram. So I have an AY and then of course I know my AX is zero here because I have nothing in the uh, that has a horizontal component. And then I have a BY here. And then we have our, um, what was it? It was a two kip, two kips load three feet away from A, okay? <clears throat> and so this is a, a simple enough um, scenario, you know, just from basic statics, you can see that by summing the moments about point B equaling zero, you can show your work here, but you should end up with, you know, negative A, Y, times 12 feet plus two kips times nine feet uh, equals zero. And then of course, a Y ends up being 1.5 kips pointing up. And then uh, by summing forces in the Y direction equaling zero, we can clearly see that B Y is gonna be half a kip or 0.5 kips Pointing up. So that's a nice little um, mental refresher on our statics. Now, the problem um, asks us to find the maximum factored moment in the beam. So again, we're going to um, look at a dead load analysis first. And uh, what we can do now is from these values, we can sketch the shear and moment diagrams. And so from the moment diagram, we can determine what the maximum dead load moment is. So let's start with our shear force diagram. So this is going to be V sub D for dead.
And so we can sketch the shear force diagram. We move up uh, by an amount of AY, which is 1.5 kips. We're gonna have a constant shear force over um, that first three foot domain. And then we have a point load that pushes us down to negative 0.5. And then we are gonna have a constant shear force. Let me redraw that constant shear force segment and make it look a little bit better. But uh, constant shear force segment until we get to the beam's end, um, which is at 12 feet. And this is three feet. And of course, this is our shear force diagram. And then from that, we can sketch our bending moment diagram for the dead load alone. And that's gonna have units, of course, of kip feet. <laughs> and sketching our moment diagram by finding the change in moment is the area beneath the shear diagram. We can sketch it out like so. Here's that 12 foot mark. And this um, point right here of maximum dead load moment is uh, 4.5 kip feet. And again, um, I get the 4.5 by finding the area of this moment diagram 1.5 times 3 gets me to 4.5, and then I subtract 0. 0.5 times 9, and that closes me off to 0. So this is my dead load moment diagram, okay? And that maximum 4.5 feet occurs at uh, a location of 3 feet away from the support. So we're going to say M dead max is 4.5 kip feet and that's at a location of x equals three feet away from a, all right? Now, in a similar way, we're gonna perform a live load analysis, okay? Live load analysis. And here, we're gonna uh, do the same kind of thing, but with the live load alone. So again, we've got our uh, simply supported beam. Try to draw it nicely here for you. And we have this live load of seven kips that is located three feet away from the support at B, okay? And then similarly, you know, we can use this diagram as our free body diagram like so. So we see we're, we're kind of repeating this process we saw with the dead load analysis, all right? And then applying equilibrium, um, I'm gonna, you know, save you uh, the details on that, but applying equilibrium, we will determine that AY equals 1.75 uh, kips pointing up, and then BY is going to give us 5.25 kips pointing up. And also in a similar way, we can sketch our shear force and bending moment diagrams due to this loading. And that bending moment diagram that we're going to um, have here in just a second will give us some information that we need. So our uh, live load um, shear force diagram is going to look something like this. And again, I'm going to spare you the details on this because the details of this just goes back to basic statics. So this is 1.75 and 5.25, and then our live load moment diagram will have two linear segments with a maximum value of 15.75. at a location of nine feet away from A. So we're gonna say M live max is 15.75 kip feet um, at X equals nine feet. All right, now um, the reason why we're, we're looking at the dead load and the live load separately is because even though they're both point loads, they're not at the same location, okay? The, the point load for the dead load is at one spot, whereas the uh, point load for the that's the live load is at a different location. And so we're gonna use this as an opportunity to um, construct a factored 
bending moment diagram using superposition. So let's write that down. We're going to say we're going to draw a factored moment diagram or diagrams by parts using superposition. Okay, so um, this is where we're going to look at our uh, load combinations that we said were, were applicable to um, our situation. So let's look at load combo number one, okay? So load combo one applied to a moment is going to be mu equals 1.4 M dead. So what we could do is um, we can sketch a moment diagram for MU where we take that M dead moment diagram and we factor it up by 40%. So we could do that. Um, or, you know, that's just going to be looking at one moment diagram specifically. So we could just uh, say that that's equal to 1.4 M dead max. And then we know that our maximum dead load uh, was 4.5 kip feet. So we can say 1.4 times 4.5, and that's going to be 6.3 kip feet. So we could do that without showing a moment, uh, an additional moment diagram. Again, all I would be doing is taking my dead load moment diagram from earlier, and then basically multiplying this entire thing by 1.4. And so that would give me an MU due to the dead load alone of uh, 1.4 times 4.5 kip feet, which is how I'm getting um, 6.3 kip feet, okay? But now let's look at load combo two. Here's where we're going to um, draw this factored moment diagram by parts using superposition, okay? So load combo two says that we have mu equals 1.2 m dead max plus 1.6 m live max, okay? Um, or just M dead and, and M live times their respective uh, uh, point. In fact, let's let's not put the max there just yet. We'll we'll use that label in just a second. So um, how do we do this? Well, again, we're gonna factor up each of those previous moment diagrams by their respective load factors. So let's look at this first bending moment diagram. Let's call this one. 1.2 m dead okay and of course we still have units of kip feet and what we're going to do is we are going to sketch the shape of our dead load moment diagram and this closes off at um, 12 feet and instead of having 4.5 here at the high point, it's 1.2 times 4.5. So that gives us a value of 5.4. Okay, and of course that's at a uh, distance or a location of three feet. All right, now let's go ahead and sketch um, a factored live load moment diagram. So this is gonna be 1.6 M live kip feet as our units. So we're gonna uh, here we're gonna sketch our um, live load moment diagram, which has a shape kind of like this, and this high point is going to um, be the fifteen point seven five we calculated earlier times one point six. So this is gonna be twenty five point two kip feet. Okay. Now, by, uh, by parts and by superposition, we want to add these together. So I'm going to change colors here. I'm going to put a big plus sign here. And we want to add these together, again, by, by superposition and um, kind of by parts is, is another way of saying that. So here we're going to draw another axis here, and we're going to have this is MU. And, of course, MU is 1.2 M dead plus 1.6 M live, all right? And here's our X axis. 
And so what we're going to do is we are going to add this 5.4 to the moment diagram uh, value at the three foot mark from the 1.6 M live. And then likewise, we're going to do a similar thing here um, with, with the points corresponding uh, to the values at the nine foot mark. Okay. Now, um, if you, you know, these moment diagrams are, are linear segments. And so you could easily, um, you know, find the slope of these and determine that the value of the moment diagram on 1.2 M dead at the nine foot mark is 1.8 kit feet. And then the value of the moment diagram on the 1.6 M live uh, at the three foot mark is 8.4 kip feet. And so when we um, superimpose these together, we're going to end up with a moment diagram that looks something like this. We're going to have a value here that is equal to 13.8. And then we're going to have a value over here that is equal to... Twenty seven, uh, pretty much twenty seven flat. Okay, let's add those together. One point eight, yeah, twenty five point two, and we'll connect those together, and then move this back down to twelve feet. And so this becomes our MU diagram that accounts for the load factors. Now, again, um, I'm freehand drawing this. I encourage you to use a straight edge or use a ruler and draw it to scale and make your moment diagrams look a lot nicer than mine doing this video. And remember, these moment diagrams, they're all made of linear segments. So use a straight line or straight edge to draw them. And so from this total MU diagram, we can see that MU is 27 kip feet. And that concludes our video. Thanks for watching.